on my screen. Okay, so this is your uh, lab assignment four. Today you are going to work with uh, system calls. Uh, now system call is nothing. It's just a way uh, of uh, in which a program, computer program communicates with the kernel and kernel is having all the uh, information, maybe device drivers that are installed, uh, which can communicate with the hardware of your system. OK, so system call is a way for programs to interact with the operating system, basically. OK, uh, basically kernel. OK, so variety of system calls are already uh, given. Like uh, you can uh, check error handling, file opening and so on, file manipulation, resource allocation. So many system calls are there. Then uh, you have, uh, so this is your first program. So before moving on to this, let's have a quick review of system calls. OK, so there are a variety of system calls like file opening, reading, writing, uh, file closing, uh, etc. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, yeah, so uh, opening, file opening, file reading, or a device, uh, accessing a device, maybe a hardware device. So for this, uh, you are given system calls. So system calls are basically functions provided by uh, your uh, distribution, maybe Linux, Unix, uh, to create an interface with the operating system. And several system calls are available in Windows as well as in Unix. So corresponding Windows system calls are given over here and corresponding uh, Unix system calls are given over here. OK, so you have process control like uh, creating a process, uh, creating a child process and so on. Device manipulation, reading and writing to a device, maybe a printer or so. Then uh, file manipulation, opening, closing, reading, writing, file and so on. Uh, you have already worked with CH mode, so changing the file protections. Uh, that is also a system call. OK, uh, then uh, you have uh, so this is basic idea. So you have your user programs and what you are going to do today is you will create a program that will manipulate the uh, that will call to uh, your operating system that will generate a call and uh, you can access the device, maybe a file or maybe uh, whatever device that is given to you. OK. So you have to create a user program for the same. Uh, now uh, this is you already know uh, to execute a script. You need two things. First is you need to change its mode to executable mode. So you write plus X for changing the mode to executable one and you write the name of your shell script. OK, then you run your shell script. Now there are three ways to run your shell script. First is dot backslash. Uh, second is sh uh, uh, name of your shell file and third is bash uh, name of your shell file. So you can use either three of them to execute your shell program. OK, so this thing you already know. Now let's have a look at reading a simple reading a file using shell script. If my virtual box is working, I'll, uh, I'll uh, open that up for you. Let's see if this is working. Otherwise, we'll uh, uh, we'll have a look at the snapshots. So what I have done over here is I have created a text to file named fruits.txt uh, in this. Um, let's see if this is working. So this is my virtual machine, Oracle Solaris. No, it's not working. Uh, let's try this one. So this machine is visible to all of you? Yes, ma'am. OK. Let's see. If Thank you. 
Okay, I don't know. So seems like it's working. So we'll enter this one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I have uh, logged into uh, my virtual machine that is uh, Solaris. Now I'll open up the uh, desktop. Let's see what are the files available to me. Uh, okay. So I've moved on to desktop and let's see. So this is my desktop. So I've created a test text file name fruit .txt. You can create uh, any file uh, with any name. OK, so I have written down names of fruits in this file, right? And then I have saved this on the desktop. Uh, I've created another shell file read underscore file dot sh. So this is a shell script. Now uh, in this uh, shell script, you can see. So I have written while read line what to read uh, you have to print line by line okay and what to print fruits.txt whatever the content is there in the fruits.txt you have to print that okay so let's see let's execute this shell script so i'll open up my terminal and i'll first of all i'll move to desktop because this these files are uh, opened on desktop and now I'll list. So yes, so in the list I have uh, fuse.txt and another shell file read underscore file dot sh. So I have shell file over here. So I want to execute this one. So I can write dot backslash read underscore file dot sh. So you can see, so it is reading the contents of the file fruits.txt. Okay, so any doubt about this? This no is what you, all right. So this is uh, what you have to do uh, with the system cost today. Now uh, let's see another shell program. So in this program, what uh, I have done is so file name is equals to dollar one. Can anyone tell me what does this dollar one represents? Ma'am, first a positional argument. Right, correct. So whenever you write dollar and you write a uh, some argument so that is it is a special variable if you have a look at it over here so there are several special variables available to you so dollar zero will print the file name of the current script dollar n let's say dollar one dollar two so dollar one is first argument that is you passed from the command line so similarly you have a dollar two second argument that you pass from the command line okay so let's go back to that script. So file name is equals to so file name is a variable and I have stored my first argument that I'm passing from the command line in this variable. OK, and now what do I want to pass? I want to pass the name of the file that I want to read. So that is fruits.txt. So fruits is a text file uh, and I have created this in a G edit editor. You can use any editor like VI editor, nano, whatever is available in your system. OK, so file name is a variable that will store whatever is passed in the command line. OK, uh, and then what it will do is it will read line line by line and print whatever is there in line of that file. OK, and this is it. Now let's execute this one again. We'll go back to terminal and I will execute this one. The second file read file to under dot sh. Now there is error. 
so this error is dollar file name because i have not passed the file name as an argument in this so it requires a file name that is one argument because i am assigning whatever i am passing in position 1 so there is no position 1 this is only position 0 right uh, that is original file so i need to pass the name of that file that is fruits dot txt over here okay so this is it so it is taking the name of that file whatever you are passing in the argument and it is printing its content uh, any doubts about this uh, no ma'am okay all right so let's have a look at first program so in this program what you have to do is you have to write a program that copies the contents of existing file into another file using system calls now uh, for uh, for using system calls you have uh, you can use uh, any programming language maybe you can use c program or maybe you can use python for copying a content of one file into another file so i'll recommend you to use c and install that gcc in your system now i'll show you how you have you can do that so let's see c program or linux ma'am we can all use shell for this uh, uh you can use shell also but uh, some of the functionalities uh, whatever is given in the assignment over here na some of the things are not uh, available with shell okay ma'am you can use shell definitely no issues with that but you have you it's better if you use that uh, c1 yes ma'am okay uh, so this is the linux programming book so visit this book and you will find all the uh, like creating file copying that file opening file all the commands over here okay so let's have a look at file input output so this book i have uploaded on lms uh, check this up linux system programming and this book would be useful uh, in your upcoming labs as well okay so let's move on to page number this file input output 23 Okay, this one. So this is open system call. So this is a C program. So uh, let's have a look at some programming example they have given. Yes. So over here. So this is a. Uh, Uh, let's see yes so uh, whenever you are writing a c program uh, first of all you need to include that uh, header files whatever header file you want to work with fd is a file descriptor um, complete program is not given over here uh, i'll show you example from calls and see this one okay over here yes so this is a c program uh, now hash include stdio.h you include whatever header files you want to then uh, this is your main function right uh, this is the system call open system call now fd is a file descriptor open uh, system call for the file text file foo.txt that you want to open up and these are the flags uh, so you have to check what is the uh, what are the flags available to you with this open system call so for that you can uh, check this one uh, all, all these are available over here so this is the open system call and with the open system call you have been given these are all the flags available so uh, this flag if you say this flag so it will create a file and so on so these are the system calls available to flags available to you so let's see o uh, this is o underscore create is there so for creating a file and rd only for reading 
so you can see. You'll find these. Uh, all these uh, flags, everything over here. Okay, so this way, uh, this is so uh, whenever so you have to search this one key. Uh, what what are the flags available to you for along with each and every system call that you want to work with and then file descriptor will store if if your file is open, it will it will retain some value in DJ value, maybe zero minus one one or depending upon what you have to check what it what this system call returns. And if it is returning minus one, if your file descriptor uh, value in the file descriptor is minus one, so it will say, OK, error uh, file. It is not uh, not able to create that file uh, named foo.txt in the read mode. OK, this means uh, so you need to print error. So print error this uh, like it is not able to create that file and P error are the standard errors available to you. If you search this one, you will find uh, you will find complete, you know, uh, uh, examples. I've seen example in this book itself. Search for this one. So P error will return the standard errors like uh, you have uh, file is file does not exist and so on. These kind of standard errors. OK, so this is a simple C program. Now what you have to do is copy this program or create a C program. Copy this one and uh, go to that uh, your text editor wherever you are. OK. Uh, in the system and uh, if uh, first of all before before working with the system calls in the C you have to install C so for installing these two commands are there first is sudo apt install build essentials so I guess in Ubuntu that GCC is already installed if GCC is not installed then you have to run these two commands this sudo apt update for updating your packages list and sudo apt install build essentials. Uh, as soon as you run these two commands, uh, C will be installed in your system and then uh, you can do this one GCC uh, dash dash version. So whenever so to check whether you have GCC installed in your system, run this command. OK, so as soon as it gives the version number, so that means GCC is installed in your system. OK, so these three commands are there now after you have installed GCC for compiling this C program in your Ubuntu or whatever. Okay. After that, what you will do is you create a C file. So this is your C file C program. Save it as dot C extension, then compile it and then execute it. So uh, I want all of you to check in your system whether GCC is there or not. Uh, because in my system GCC is not there. Otherwise, I had shown you the demo for that. So uh, if any one of you can uh, share your screen like uh, GCC is there, so that is good. I'll tell you how you can compile your first program for C program. Oh, Ma'am, I have GCC, but I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux, so uh, it will look like Windows. Uh, that is OK. I think uh, uh, that should work fine. I'm so should I share my screen? Oh, uh, yes, yes, you can share Aaron. So after this, uh, yes, so create a C file first of all. Yes, ma'am. In the same folder. Uh, and copy that command from the geeks for geeks. Copy that uh, link. OK, I'll share that link so that it becomes easy. Mm. 
input output system calls in C. Hmm. Oh, I have shared the link in uh, chat box. Hmm. This one. Yeah, from this side. Yes. Done. Okay, so save it as some C file dot C extension. Yes, I'm saved. Saved. Okay. Now come to uh, your terminal wherever uh, you are. This, this is the terminal now. Okay, this is terminal. Okay. Now uh, you have to do GCC or uh, dash dash version. Check if it is installed. Okay, this is installed. Take it. Yes, Mm -hmm. So now you have to GCC file dot C space minus O space uh, file. File is the name. I will put exe. Uh, sorry. Okay. I have put exe. Mm, you can put anything. Okay. Now everyone have a look at this command. So GCC is for compiling and file.c is the name of your file and minus o is you want to create so because gcc or c program c is a compiler not the interpreter so you need to first compile it and then you will execute it so after compiling it will uh, uh, give you output compiled output in a uh, exe file so he has written name exe so whatever file.c is uh, compiled so exe file will be created and uh, this will be saved and your output will be saved in exe okay uh, this is clear to everyone so i suggest whenever you are executing a file you write gcc uh, rn do compile it again write gcc file.c minus o space file so i suggest whenever you are compiling you use same file name whenever you are uh, compiling okay so you can see over here so two executable files are created one is named is file because we have uh, executed this command again and second is exe file okay now let's run this exe file that file so write dot backslash uh, file yes so this is executed uh, okay file descriptor equal to there, but yes ma'am foo is not there so that is why foo.txt does not exist uh, no, but it should not give error. Na. It means so this command is this uh, it program. Actually, is, it, it actually created foo.txt. Right, exactly. So uh, file descriptor is returning three. This means uh, it has created. If it has returned minus one, this means file was not created. Okay. So this is the program. So this is how you have to run and compile your C program. So clear to everyone, any doubts about this? So check GCC uh, dash dash version. If it is not there, that means you need to install. And for installing, two commands are there. Uh, one is build essential one and second is update. OK, uh, so that's it for today. Uh, you have to work with now. Uh, let me share my screen again. I will tell you in the assignment what you have to do. First question I'll tell you. So this is your uh, assignment over here. Yes. So what you have to do is so you want to write a program to copy the content of a file, one file into another file. So names of two files should be read as an input from the command line. OK, uh, so what you have to do is you have to take two files, name, name, uh, name of the two files, copy content of one file to another file. Now, whenever you are copying content of one file to another file, first you need to check, check whether the source file exists or not. If it does not exist, so you cannot copyright. So you should uh, you should uh, give error and terminate exit. 
then uh, if source file is readable or not you have open it in our read mode or not uh, if it is not readable so what you need to do you need to change its permission but in this command in this right now you are not you just uh, uh, print error and you will terminate okay uh, then uh, you will check whether destination file exists or not okay and whether it is writable or not you can write in it or not okay if it does not exist then uh, you uh, you need to uh, print error and then terminate okay finally if all of these conditions are not satisfied in that case that means source file exists and it is in read mode and destination file exists and it is in write mode okay in that case you will just copy the content of one file into another file so this program you have to create either you can use shell script you can use c okay so this is your first program similarly you have to work with other programs okay so that's it for today or uh, start working on this one if you have any doubts do let me know ma'am can we use c++ instead of c uh you want to use c++ yes ma'am uh, okay fine but i'm not sure because upcoming labs are on uh, based on c itself few of them so right now if you want to work with the c++ that is okay but in future uh, if some program is c based uh, what will you do then you will install c at that time will see me like uh, the program that i can make with the c i can also make with c++ right so mm -hmm. i think there will be any problem okay all right if you don't feel like uh, any issues are there then it's fine okay ma'am okay only input in c in c out is changed instead of printf itself theek hai fine any other uh, doubt